I love Upward. And I would confidently say that I can hop into almost any casual match on that map and top score. But recently, I've had a bit of a realization. I've played this map religiously for almost 10 years, and not once have I queued into a game and thought, wow, this seems like a great day to play heavy. Ah! Same goes for Engineer, Sniper, Medic, you get the point. Today, I want to see if my upward experience has paid off and if I can really carry my team on any class or if I'm simply a one-trick wonder. To measure my performance, I'm going to base my gameplay on the in-game score. I will play one full game with each class on both sides of the map while trying my absolute hardest to win. The class with the highest total points will be crowned the King of Upward. Starting off with the scout, I jumped into the first game and immediately another scout on my team took notice of me and for some reason began to copy my loadout? Okay, so we're in our first game. Uh, I'm playing scout and we already have a lover and uh, perhaps perhaps a life partner actually. So that's pretty cool. Fish too? I also have a fish. Hold up, we gotta go back. <laughs> see, see, look, fish. There's no fish. From there, I started to rack up a couple kills, you know, doing the normal thing, throwing some cleavers, getting some force of nature shots, and then I got Ubered, and this guy was very hyped for me. Holy shit, you go see! The first thing I noticed about playing Scout on Upward is it's way easier than I thought. As long as the enemy team has no sentries, you can essentially just roam free in the back lines and bully the absolute hell out of anyone you want. And this is especially true with the force of nature because of the increased mobility and the no 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 Breaking news! This just in, we have reports of a violent assault with a frying pan from a sniper who got the most undeserved kill ever. Like seriously, look at this BS. I just need an excuse to show you guys. He's, he's standing here facing the other way and he hits me with a frying pan. I don't get this game, dude. What the f you tell me that pan? pan. Oof, wow, sorry for the interruption, folks. But as much as you can harass people in their back lines, a single mini or level one sentry will completely ruin your day. Oh, of course, there's a fucking sentry. Oh my God. My next important discovery was this corner. Oh, this is the good spot. I can just launch people off the cliff. I don't know if that maximizes my points though, and technically that's what I should be doing right now. So, yeah, let's go for it. That was a, such a sad attempt. Unfortunately, every single time I tried to launch someone off the map, they didn't have enough health to make it all the way down. Oh, you ready? <laughs> I mean, he still fell off, so I'll take that. This is my time to shine though. If they cap this, I'm kind of screwed. I gotta, I gotta benefit from the cliff, like this. Come on, that was not a benefit. Oh, that's a benefit though. <laughs> no, he didn't even fall off, are you serious? Either way, this whole section of the map is actually really good for Scout, and we did end up holding the point and winning the round. But before I show you the attacking round, I had a little prediction of what might happen that I think you should hear. All right, I'm thinking attacking is probably gonna be quite a lot harder though, because I am I imagine they're gonna have some level three sentries or at least some sort of NG nest. Even disregarding the sentries, the first point is a nightmare for Scout to push out of. That is, if you don't have this, the Bonk Atomic Punch. Immediately after equipping this, I was able to walk straight through the red team, kill their sniper, while also ruining that spy's backstab, sorry, break their buildings, and drop the medic. Okay, that was worth it, that was worth it. And with that, my team was able to pretty easily cap the first point and push forward. I used my bonk again and got into the back lines to continue my bullying. Hey. Or heavy. Oh, this is gonna be so mean. <laughs> These kills basically just snowballed into my team pushing forward as I bullied the red team with the force of nature. And for all of you sweaty scout mains who are about to comment about how, um, the stock scattergun is actually far superior to the force of nature if you consider the raw damage output. Even if I could have done more consistent damage with the stock, the game would be nowhere near as fun without the ability to fly around the map and just launch people like this. I just launched them all the way across the hole? That was supposed to be like a funny kill. We're not done. Okay, thank you. Yes, okay. 30 points, 10 kill streak, 86 total points. That's not bad at all. That's a really good start. And with no other competition yet, Scout sits at the top of the scoreboard with a total of 86 points. Moving on to the next class, Soldier. 
Luckily for me, I play quite a lot of Soldier, so I wasn't too nervous about getting a low score. The game started with the classic first point spawn camp that unfortunately happens in most casual games. I got a few kills, including an almost Mr. Beast air shot. Whoa. Oh, that was almost a Mr. Beast moment. Shout out to Zenith. Zenith, Zenith. I don't know how to say his name, I'm not gonna lie. But after that whiff, I decided it was time for the direct hit. Oh, okay, okay, look, look. I know that doesn't really make any sense because it's actually harder to aim with, but for some reason, that was my thought process going in, so that's what I did. And even though my aim isn't perfect, the direct hit ended up working out and we closed off the round with a 31 point win. 31 points? I was on the scoreboard, so I wasn't useless. Surprisingly, not that great, actually. I'm kind of ashamed. Okay, I think I'm gonna keep the direct hit on just for the first point until I can kill the sentries, and then if I'm not doing great, I'll probably switch off to the stock. Oh, he doesn't even know. Bam. What the oh, fuck? Did he just... Did he just rocket jump with a shotgun? What? Did I, am I seeing things? We gotta get the slow-mo on that one. What? <laughs> that was crazy. After destroying all the buildings, I felt pretty useless, so I did end up going back to the stock rocket launcher. Didn't I say I was going to switch off the direct hit? I should probably do that now, because I am not doing well. Switching back to stock may have hurt my ego, but it did wonders for my KD. Pretty quickly, I started to get some kills again, and I realized I actually have a chance at beating up my score from the scout games. Wait, I don't know what happened, but things are looking up for C-Ravioli right now. We got 67 points? That's not bad. That's not bad at all, actually. From there, all I had to do was just some standard point-and-shoot soldier gameplay until eventually... Yes! 57. 88 points. Okay, I think that does beat Scout, actually. And beat Scout it does. Soldier takes the top spot in the scoreboard with 88 points, and we move on to Pyro. The game started off really rough for me. I got a few kills here and there, but this one sniper named Eat Ass kept eating my... Oh my fucking god, dude. Eat ass. I was pretty useless for most of the round, but as we got closer to the last point, I finally began to get some more consistent kills. In my experience, the Dragon's Fury really shines around this area of the map because of how many little flank roots there are. Combine that with some insane burst damage, and you can essentially ambush enemies and kill them before they even know it. Why is it so easy to kill heavies? What? I ended the round with a respectable 58 points and moved on to blue team. I feel like a lot of these points are just gonna be dictated by how long the game is, and that may have been a flaw in my scientific study here, but whatever, it's fine. And in the beginning of the attacking round, I proved just how insane the Dragon's Fury is for destroying sentries. The Pyro Sentry Buster? Why is that so good? Like, that was crazy. But apparently, the same doesn't apply for teleporters. Like, look at this. Holy shit, Engineer! He's just on the other end of the fucking teleporter, just... Smashing away to, like, goddamn Bob the Builder. When trying to push through the second point, I once again had to demonstrate the sentry-busting power of this flamethrower. And again, on last, I swear this weapon does more than break sentries, but they just had so many and no one else was doing it, so... And, of course, throughout the round, I also got a lot of kills on non-sentry players. Okay, well, we will take it. 112 points. Holy. That is gonna be hard to beat. And with 112 points, Pyro takes the top spot on the leaderboard. Next up, Demo Man. Now, if you remember the intro, I was talking some pretty big game about top scoring on Demo, so I've got a reputation to uphold here. I do think there's some potential for some cool kills or cool kill streaks. And regardless of if I get the most points, I think I'm gonna carry the team. That's my prediction. I started off the round with the C Ravioli Classic. This Trimp Jump. I definitely did not invent this, but I do it all the time to get behind the enemies to break their sentries, and it works wonders. In this case though, there were no sentries to break anyway, so I decided to do the C Ravioli Classic Part 2, which gets you straight to the enemy spawn for some easy bullying. Jesus, who had to pee on me? Like, why? 
He's above me. Like, he's sniping with P and then just not following up. Sounds like my ex. For the record, that is, I don't, I don't even have an ex. In this clip, I want you to notice where the cart is currently located and now where I am. The way I play demo on this map is just by avoiding the objective and wasting as many people's time as I can. Bro, yeah, just walk at me, pee on me, and then run away. Like, he doesn't even follow up. This is, we have a toxic relationship, me and this sniper. He's gonna do it again. You guys' demo is so incredibly annoying, doing nothing but spawn camping on blue. Yeah, see? But it's working. That's how you play demo. What are you doing if you're not spawn camping on demo? I don't need stickies to spawn camp. Tide turner behind, and then I do the thing. The reason this playstyle is so effective is because once you stop the enemy engineers from setting up sentries, you essentially have free reign over the entire backline. Oh my god, I was hoping to get a random crit and out demo night the demo night. That would have been so funny. I'm sorry, engineer. It has to be done. Bye bye, spy. One consistent thing that happens when doing this, though, is you tend to make people upset. Wow. Your demo was so fun to play against. Look, I would argue that even though I'm not getting a whole lot of points right now, I'm winning just based off the people that I'm upsetting. The problem with spawn camping is when it happens to the attacking team, the game is just stuck. If we just spawn camp these guys, that's not gonna be very good for my points. Unfortunately, that is what happened this round, but the positive thing is that people kept jumping at me, which led to... Mr. Beast! <laughs> so stupid. And even though I got a good kill streak, it didn't really matter because we just rolled the other team too hard. Oh, they're ignoring the cart though. Yeah, well, I mean, it's definitely been a game of upwards so far. Sadly, 51 points places Demo Man at the bottom of the scoreboard. And the only thing sadder is now I have to play. Heavy weapons guy. My primary struggle with heavy was my lack of mobility. I kept standing on the cart and getting shot from a distance while not really trying to close the gap between myself and my enemies. I think my problem is, I don't know any other way to play heavy, aside from like Fat Scout or like the the Buffalo Steak or whatever, but I don't think that really counts. I'm talking about a way that'll actually get me kills. Now, I wasn't blessed with the greatest team to help me attack, but I was most definitely not pulling my weight, as I was continuously dying due to my horrible positioning and game sense. Okay, yeah, this is probably really bad. Yeah. I did try switching up my loadout a few times, but after being completely useless for the entire first round, I spotted a heavy main who looked like he knew what he was doing, so then I just copied his loadout. This guy's got an Australian minigun, so you know he's good. What is he using? He's got the gloves. Okay, I'm putting those on, and the sandwich. I'm just gonna copy what this guy does, because he's got a cool loadout. I was enjoying my time fighting alongside my new heavy friend and the pocket medic we shared, but even they couldn't save me from being backstabbed. Okay. And after getting stuck in front of three explosive enemies, I decided I needed to be more agile, and so I switched back to the Tomislav and the banana. No, thanks. I just sit here and eat this. Please don't do it. I, I deserve that. <gasps> You're a fool for that. I appreciate him trying that though. Finally, I got a few more kills and I got to experience how it feels to play heavy. And things were really starting to look up for me until I can't do anything about that, except for fall into the hole. Though I was getting better, my lack of mobility and poor positioning was still the biggest source of my problems. And eventually, we did lose. But I ended with a final score of 51 points, which you may remember is the same as the Demo Man. And I don't know if I should be happy or sad about that, but that's what happened. Coming up next is everybody's favorite Texan uncle, the Engineer. If you remember what I said at the start of the video, I do not play engineer. So my original plan was to avoid building a sentry nest for as long as I could. I did want to try ninjineering with the Eureka effect, but I figured I should save that for defense. So I started off with a gunslinger and widowmaker. Nothing crazy happened this game, but I was pleasantly surprised with how fun it was just to switch things up and play a different class. We won the game pretty quick and I finished off with 14 kills and zero deaths. And now, I was ready to pull out the Ninjineer. 
Oh my god, there's a spy right there. Wait, he knows. He knows where the teleporter is. My teleporter was sapped, and I unfortunately could not successfully manage to sneak a new one behind the enemies. Yeah, okay, they know. I hate it. Ooh, new ninja near spot just dropped. No, they sapped it. Who does that? Oh my god. Eventually, we got pushed all the way to the last point, and I decided I had to give up on my dreams and play normal engineer. Or so I thought. Wait, I wonder if I can do this. I realized I could sentry jump across to the high ground while my friendly engineer held down the fort. Being able to run around like this and get kills was exactly what I wanted. The only thing more fun than sentry jumping away from your gun... Can I get back up by doing this, do you think? ...is jumping back up to it. Oh, I'm so smart. After a tough battle, the sentries were taken down and I had to get revenge. Oh no, not like this. Oh my gosh, what do I do? I'm gonna try to gunsling or just run out and stop them. Who are you? Why is there heavy here? This could be the greatest clutch of all time. Oh my god. Please. No. Please. Commit. We kill him. Oh my god. This is so intense. Oh my god. <laughs> what? Why was that so fun? 60 points. And not only did I have a surprising amount of fun, but I finished the game with 60 points, putting Engineer in fourth place. Moving on to Medic. We're about to start the Medic round, and uh, of course we're using the crit screen because uh, I've watched the Elmaxo video. Who do I crits though? We have no stickies. Ew. Okay, I didn't realize this until editing, but his rocket launcher isn't even tradable, which means he just bought it off the market, which means his hail zone is definitely just farmed kills on an idle server, so... His hail zone. <laughs> so weird. I almost don't want to give him a crits after that. That was so fucking cringy. Unfortunately, I did end up losing the crits because not even Mr. Hail Zone could protect me from the best spy in the world. Surprise! What? Oh my god, is the spy cheating? Hello, uh, I'm recording right now. Am I, um, am I kind of cross on the mic? Yeah, but it's fine. I can just cut it out. You should like and subscribe and comment and What? <laughs> anyway, the medic gameplay was not going too well. I had really bad positioning and I kept dying so much so that I didn't even get a single Uber off the entire round. The only positive to come from this is I'm pretty sure the soldier from earlier wanted me to be his medic girlfriend. Nice sir, medic. <laughs> He's got a crush. <laughs> he definitely has a little crush. Poor guy, he probably thinks I'm a girl. And to nobody's surprise, we ended up losing the round. Well, that was a really bad round. Nine points. Oh God. On the attacking side, my team was actually doing a lot better and things were really starting to look up. Okay, I said my team was doing better, not me. We did actually end up winning the game, but somehow I still felt like a loser. Well, I mean, we won. I was apparently not entirely useless, but I feel like I did nothing. And I ended the game with a final score of 28 points, placing Medic at the bottom of the leaderboard. The next class on the list is Sniper. But to be honest, there's not a whole lot to say other than, yep, I definitely clicked his head or nope, I missed that one. So instead, I'm going to tell you a quick little story about someone you all know and love. The sniper god, Fat Magic. Some of my earliest TF2 memories were back in 2014 playing 24-7 Skyle Harvest servers. I was going about my usual Sunday morning gaming when a bunch of flog pyros joined the server and began to absolutely terrorize it and screaming in voice chat about, It's Squidward Sunday! Don't be a po- Be a Squidward! And these pyros were led by none other than Fat Magic. So at first, I was super annoyed, as one would be. But then I thought, you know, maybe I do want to be a Squidward. So uh, I put on my flog, and then I joined their Steam group, and the rest is history. Unfortunately, I am not as good at Sniper as Fat Magic, and I couldn't carry my team to victory. That said, I ended the game with a respectable 70 points, which places Sniper in the fourth place. Last but not least, everyone's favorite sneaky Frenchman, the Spy. Before the game even started, there was a bit of a scene happening in the spawn room. I don't get why people enjoyed doing this. 
Can I get some quiet in the spawn? I'm reading. So true, Xbox veteran. In this game, I really wanted to embrace my inner sweaty spy main, so you know I had to use the kunai and the dead ringer. I started off the game with a nice failed stab and sap, but luckily my teammate was there to show me how it's done. Dude, who, why do they have so many? Okay, good job, spy. I love it. I really want to use this opportunity to showcase the power of just walking backwards as the spy. Got him. Granted, that was a gibbous sniper, but nobody on the team even questioned my existence until I stabbed him. I found that two of the most satisfying things when playing spy are, one, getting a kunai stab when you're about to die. Okay. 2 HP, I really need a stab. Thank you so much for being deaf. And two, trick stabbing an engineer who just watched you sap his sentry. Oh, Matador! Or really any trick stab for that matter. What the fuck? What is happening? No way, that was also a spy! I. Oh my god. The more clueless your enemies are, the funnier. 40 points to start, not bad. If I, if I have a really good round, I think I might be able to beat out that pyro. Moving on to the final round of the entire challenge, I knew I really had to start counting up the points if I wanted a chance to dethrone pyro on the leaderboard. Okay. Bro, my dead ringer just fucking leveled up a strange publicly. That's like the most obvious fake death you can possibly have. No! <laughs> Why would he turn? I thought he was just gonna keep running. Okay, well, 86 points, you know, that's, that's all right. The game finished and I ended with 86 points, which means Spy and Scout tie for third place. With all nine classes ranked, I can now say Pyro is officially the king of Upward. I'm still gonna one trick demo though, like and subscribe.